Okay, chapter three is called Parallel and Perpendicular Lines, and here's the symbol for parallel and the symbol for perpendicular. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off with skew lines, um, just defining what those are. So you might think that lines could either um, be parallel or they intersect. That seems pretty reasonable. And, and in two dimensions, that's true. But when we move into the third dimension, that's not necessarily the case. Um, so skew lines are not parallel. Um, but also, they don't intersect. Okay, and the easiest way to illustrate that is um, with a three-dimensional object like this cube. Okay, so if you imagine, um, let's take the bottom um, edge here of this cube, and let's extend that into a line. Okay, so there's a line. Um, and then if I take this um, top edge up here, and I extend this, into a line. Hopefully you can visualize how the blue one would pass over the, um, the orange line. And um, it, it, they're definitely not parallel, but they also would not intersect, okay? Because they're on different planes. So just using these two pens as another example here, let me try to set it up in the same way. My, the, the blue pen is just passing over the, the orange pen. These are skew lines, they're not parallel but they also do not intersect. Okay, so that's what skew lines are. Okay, all right, and then we've got two different postulates here. The parallel postulate says that if there is a line and a point not on the line, so let me just take that piece first. If there is a line and a point not on the line, something like that, then Just redraw what I had going on there. I probably should put that up there. Okay. So um, if there is a line and a point not on the line, then there is exactly one parallel line through the point. So there's just going to be one line that you can pass through what I have labeled as point A here that is parallel to, um, to the red line. Okay. That little symbol means... Um, those little arrows just mean they're parallel. Sometimes you'll see the double arrows. Um, that works too. Okay. All right. And then um, a, another piece of vocab here. A transversal is a line that in intersects um, two other lines. Okay. It can also intersect three lines or four lines or five lines, but at a minimum it has to intersect two other lines. Okay. All right. So let's look at some angle pairs that are formed by transversals. Okay. So we're going to be dealing with this situation a whole lot in this chapter. This is kind of the heart of this chapter is when we have two lines and a transversal. So the line that is uh, labeled as T in each one of these pictures, T for transversal, that would be considered a transversal because it, it intersects the other two lines. And it's true technically, like this line would eventually intersect that one as well. So this would be a transversal. But in the picture, the one that's intersecting the two lines, that's usually what we call the transversal. Okay. All right. So, um, We've got these angle pairs, so you see where I have the 2 and the 6, I'm talking about those two angles. So I'm just going to um, label what these are called. These are called, um, well, let me describe it first. If you look in this intersection, the 2 is in the top right corner of that intersection. The 6 is in the top right corner of this intersection. So you can, I think of those as, hey, they're in corresponding positions in their different intersections. So these are called corresponding angles. Okay. Um, all right, let's look at the next one. So um, if this is my, the, the orange one, this is my transversal, right? As I was just saying. 
Okay, so that's a technical term, a transversal. The other two lines that are not transversals, I don't, there's no good technical term for that, but I call them tracks. I kind of think of them as train tracks. So you got your tracks, and then you got the line crossing over your tracks, okay? And if I look at these two um, numbered angles, angle four and angle five, um, they're on the inside of the tracks, or you could say the interior of the tracks, okay? Right? They're both on the inside of the tracks. And then um, when you look at the transversal, they're on different sides of the transversal. So you could say they're on alternate sides of the transversal. So this is called, this pair is called alternate interior angles. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, in a kind of similar way, the one and eight here are still on different sides of the transversal. So they're on alternate sides of the transversal, but this time they're on the outside of the tracks. So they're going to be alternate exterior angles. Okay. And then our last pair. Um, these are on the same side of the, trans, the, the uh, transversal, and they're on the inside of the tracks. Okay. So I often refer to them as same side interior angles. A lot of geometry books do, um, but and, and the ones that I used to teach out of do, so it's hard for me not to say that, but, um, and it's fine if you do say that, but our book calls these consecutive interior angles. Okay, so Personally, I'm fine with same side interior angles. That's the same thing. Okay, so consecutive means in a row. So those, those are adjacent to each other. They're next to each other, right? They're next to each other and inside the tracks. Okay, all right. So that is really all that's in 3.1. Not much in there, but it's super important that you know the, the names of these angled pairs, and that you can identify them. Um, if you can't do that, it's going to ruin the rest of the chapter for you. So that's why it's separated into its own section, because it's really important to get that down. But once you got that, there's not too much in 3.1. Okay. Okay, so now on to 3.2. It's called Parallel Lines and Transversals. Um, and we've got the same kind of situation from 3.1. The big difference here is that now my tracks are parallel, okay? So if I've got two parallel lines with a transversal, must be parallel for all of these, well, then we've got these theorems that I'm about to describe. But um, it's really important that you recognize that you have to have parallel lines for these to work, okay? So I'm going to emphasize that over there. Tracks must be parallel. Okay, so there's going to be relationships with the angled pairs, um, but they only work with the parallel tracks. Okay, all right, so um, the corresponding angles theorem. Well, this says let's, let's find a, a set of corresponding angles. So angle six and angle two would be corresponding angles, they're both in the top right. Um, part of their intersections, okay? And I just kind of gave it away. They're going to be congruent always if the tracks are parallel. So I could say if this situation, if I've got this, then um, angle two is going to be congruent to angle six, okay? That's not the only set of uh, parallel angles here. Sorry, sorry not parallel, um, corresponding angles. So, you know, angle one and angle five would be also another set. They're both in the top left part of their intersections, okay? Three and seven would be another corresponding pair, so I'm gonna list all of them here. And then um, four and eight would be the last set, okay? So those are going to be all congruent, okay? Now let's look at alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles, that would be like angle three and angle six. 
They're on alternate sides of the transversal, but they're on the inside of the tracks, and they also are going to be parallel to each other. So three and six, angles three and six are, I keep saying parallel, congruent to each other. Um, and then um, angles four and five, there's another set there, right, of alternate interiors. Those are also alternate sides and inside the tracks. So four and five are congruent to each other as well. Okay. Following the same pattern with alternate exterior angles. So alternate exterior angles like two and seven. Those are different sides of the transversal outside the tracks and you guessed it, they are gonna be congruent. Okay. Um, one and eight would also be congruent. Okay. And then we've got our consecutive interior angles theorem. And this is the one that is not like the others. Okay, So let's find a, a pair of um, consecutive interior angles. So those are going to be inside the tracks, and they're going to be consecutive, so next to each other. So like 3 and 5 would be one pair, and then 4 and 6 is another pair. Okay, Just looking at the markings I've already put on this, I can see that those are not congruent. Even without those markings, just by the looks of it, this sure looks, angle three sure looks like an acute angle, and angle five sure looks like an obtuse angle. So that's always going to happen, actually, where you have acute and obtuse angles, with one exception. If your transversal happens to be at 90 degrees, well, then, then three and five would be both 90 degrees and congruent. But otherwise, almost all the time, um, they're not going to be congruent, because one of them is acute and one is obtuse. But what is true about them is that they're supplementary. So I could say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 is 180 degrees. Same thing with 4 and 6. Okay, so really important to remember that's the set that is um, supplementary. All the other angle pairs that we have names for are congruent. Okay. All right, so let's uh, try some examples. I'm going to solve for x here. Um, I'm also going to explain how I, uh, I did this, uh, even though this problem just says solve for x. OK, first they tell me that s is parallel to t, so let me put that in the picture. OK, now they're marked as parallel. OK, so looking at the angle pair where I have the, um, the expressions, they're on different sides of the transversal, alternate sides, and they're on the outside of the tracks, right? So they're, um, they're going to be alternate exterior angles. And that means they're going to be congruent, OK? So I can say that um, 3 times the quantity x minus 8 is equal to 2 times the quantity x plus 10, OK? And if I was ever asked to explain that or justify it, maybe in a proof coming up later in the chapter, then I could say that is the uh, alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay, did a lot of abbreviating because I don't want to get in, uh, in my space over there. Okay, and now I'm going to solve this. You know, and I could justify all these steps as well, but let's just solve for x. So I'm going to distribute on both sides. Okay, I'll subtract 2x from both sides. Get the x terms together. And I'll add 24. And then x equals 44. And I'm finished. Okay. Oops, off screen. There it is. OK. You can try the next one if you like. Um, you can pause the video. I'm going to get right to it. OK, looking at these. So the common mistake I'll see on a test or quiz, people will set them equal to each other. But just looking at those, that one looks acute. This one looks obtuse. And they are um, actually consecutive interior angles. So they're going to be supplementary. This is the set that's supplementary. Okay. So yeah, I can say 4x minus 12, the quantity 4x minus 12 plus 120 is going to equal 180. 
I'm not bothering with the degree symbols because X is just going to be a number that I plug in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that would be, I don't have room there, but this would be the um, consecutive interior angles theorem. Okay, that's my reasoning there. Okay. All right, so let's uh, solve this. I'm going to, let's see, I'll combine negative 12 and 120. Okay, now I'm going to subtract um, 108 from both sides. And finally divide by 4. And x is going to come out to 18. Okay, and that is 3.2. I will see you next time.